Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. Today we're here with John Gordillo. How are you doing? Pretty good. Good. So I think. your show is called, uh, what's it called? It's called Cheap Shots at the Defenseless. Do you take cheap shots at the Defenseless? <laughs> well, it's sort of a, I mean, uh, maybe. I mean, it's sort of a goof on what stand-up is obviously supposed to be, because nobody ever has a right to reply. Uh, so, in a sense, anyone's defenses when you have a go at them. But actually, what the show is about, uh, as it goes on, is it's about really companies and marketers trying to take cheap shots at us, trying to get us with our defenses down. And it's a lot of the show is about the sort of the pretense that a lot of companies have, you know, with all that kind of personal address stuff where they kind of go, hey, how you doing, Lucinda, and they'll put yeah. Lucinda on the mail, and and they will just act pally with you and try and get you, you know, just to get you emotionally so you interact with them and spend money. So, so that's kind of what the show is about, uh, becomes about, and it's about the kind of relationships that they want to have with you, as opposed to, you know, real relationships with children and friends and family, which are difficult because there's two people involved. Change yourself constantly. Nobody needs to be scared about having cheap shots. So nobody what? Nobody needs to be scared when they come to your show. Oh no 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 no! no. It really isn't. And yeah. actually, I mean, you're interviewing me for this. We're sort of about halfway through the thing, and uh, and it's one of those things where it's, you're on a weird line between stand-up and theatre, where you really are locked into something that's an hour long. And what can happen, and it's actually happened to me the last couple of nights, is that you forget to be a comic, you forget to be funny, and you forget to have those couple of minutes of the show where you just plant and you just loose and bring people in because you're just going, the show, it must, the show must be done. And so, so yeah, so interesting, yeah, it, 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 there will be a bit more chat, I think, from tonight than there has been. But, um, but you know, not too much because you just locked into these bloody shows. But absolutely, there's no putting down and heckling or picking yeah. people, picking on people because you just got no time for it. Um, what made you want to do? Uh, show where you were sort of presenting rather than just general sort of stand-up stuff. And think, what do you prefer doing? I think that was more kind of who I was then, which is not really this guy. I, mean, guy, but, uh, I, I was very interested in the late 90s. I was really interested in talk shows and I was really interested in David Lessonman, who I thought when he first started in the early 80s, I thought had really done really creative things and used television in a really inventive way and actually was quite subversive and quite countercultural. and I liked all of those things. And it was an attempt to do sort of an anti-talk show. Uh, so I was very interested in that, but I have to say, several years later, I, I'm not so interested in that. I, thought, I, think what's, I think what's interesting is, I mean, right now is how do you do expressive comedy? How do you make it, you know, personally grounded and credible and then how do you talk about things from that perspective. So I kind of look back at a thing like that and I think yeah, things about it were really cool. But it kind of lacked an agenda. It lacked it really lacked something distinctive at the time. So that's what I think we'll see. So I'll try to work out. So do you prefer doing writing or I prefer directing. Directing and and, yeah. and, and, and I do uh, I've directed you know quite lots of bits of telly and there's a film that I'm writing with someone that's something forever <laughs> but we want to make that independently. And I, so I very much enjoyed that aspect of it. I like the idea, and I like, in, in, like with an Edinburgh show, you know, you're making a story, however you do it, however you're crushing your jokes together. You're still trying to make it, you know, have some kind of arc. And, and I like very much that, that, that sense of when you tell the audience information and when you don't. So all of that is kind of directorial and there's construction, and that really, I find fascinating. Yeah. So you've performed lots of the Edinburgh before. I've done three shows. This is my fourth one. I've not been here for four years. Well, what were you doing in your time off? I was doing, well, I was gigging. There was always, for, for three of those years, there was another legitimate project that was up that made me not have to do it. And one of them was just cowardice. Um, uh, so there was just, a, you know, always around sort of the thing with the pie. What do you like about performing here? <laughs> it's a total You really face yourself. And it's uncomfortable and it's difficult because I take my shows and I listen back to them the next morning and I often wince at them uh, and I think that's brilliant. I mean, it's very difficult, but it really is where you learn and you get better and you see the results night after night. So that's what I like about it. I like the fact that there are no excuses. It's just you and the show, you and the audience. You want to blame the audience if it doesn't work and you listen to it back and you kind of go, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. You just didn't give them the right information. 
and things like that. And so it's about trying to find a style and a voice that's appropriate to me. This age of my life, I try to figure out how to make that funny and engaging to people. So I love that. That's why this is great. The PR, the bullshit is crazy. The festival is desperate. You know, we're lying to people like mad to try and get them into our shows. Or people just overrate what they do, and it's crazy. It's just crazy free market selling. Uh, but inside it, the actual experience of doing it and going to the cold face of figuring it out and having an audience that's willing to sit there and let you work it out is brilliant. It's, it's so you're working on a film. Is there anything else you're working on or that you have coming up over the next year? Uh, we're just about to, well, we're going to release, we di uh, just uh, directed a DVD of a comedian called Reggie Hunter who's very yeah. successful here and literally just putting the finishing touches on the bonus features in the next two or three days and submitting that next week. Um, no, getting the movie up and running is the main thing. Trying to figure out how to be the best stand-up I can be and trying to figure out how to make a film. That, that's what I'm all about. Thank you so much for coming. Pleasure, man. I'm sorry I didn't make you laugh. No, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't trying to be funny. No, that's my problem. Uh, it shows all the assembly rooms. Yeah. Uh, what time? 7.30. 7.30 every night. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank